Hey everybody, it's Michael and Peter here with GoodyReader.com. Today we're going to initiate a drop test on the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch with Glow Light. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because it's still being sold all over the US in major big box retailers and the UK. So many people are obviously wondering, how does this hold up from day-to-day -day use and the occasional drop? What we have behind us is a whiteboard. We have a five foot height marker and a three foot. From the three foot, we're gonna do a pocket miss. That's as if you're gonna put it in your purse or your pocket. You miss your pocket, hits the ground. Five foot, we're gonna do three tests, back, side, and then the screen. Mike, from what you saw in the simple touch drop uh, a couple weeks ago, what do you think this is gonna, how is it gonna hold up? We saw the power button fly off last time. Do you think they've improved anything on that? Design-wise, it more or less looks at the same thing. I'm kind of worried about the actual glow light and if right. any of, you know, if we're going to test obviously to see in all stages if the glow light itself gets disrupted. And, you know, of course, it's a windy day and people live in places where it's not always optimal conditions. So it, it, I'm wondering how the actual wind will affect it dropping maybe in different ways. Before we initiate the drop test, let's take a look at the overall condition of the Nook Simple Touch of Glow Light. As you can see, it's in perfect condition. No scratches, no dents, nothing like that. So it's in picturesque condition, but not for long. So Peter, I noticed your jacket has zippers on it. And you might come into the situation where you think the zipper is open, but it's really not. And it just may fall out casually on the ground. Most people bring their e-readers on their commute. So they're on the bus, the subway, um, in the streets. And obviously the streets are not paved with gold. It's paved with concrete. <laughs> so let's do the quintessential pocket miss and see what happens. Whoa. All right, but what we've seen from just the three foot drop is that the trim is starting to separate from the bezel, as well as some minor superficial damage. The one thing that we noticed on the back of the Nook e-readers as a whole is that they have to be painted in some way because they scratch really damn easy. All right, let's try it from the five foot mark. So people all the time have e-readers on their desks, on their bookshelf places where you put them kind of out of reach out of the way and then whoops you know they end up falling on the ground so what we're gonna do is most people just leave them on their back you know and whoosh, there you go so we're gonna do a backdrop test on the five foot mark and see what happens careful now <laughs> don't drop it there goes the power button again yeah that power button not that seems to fly off all the time now all right, let's go in for a closer look. As you can see that the screen itself has a lot of weird lines on it now. Now, this is directly placed from the ground in front of the camera. We haven't tried to refresh to see if the screen is damaged, but you did notice that the back power button did fly off again, which remains consistent with uh, the way that the original Nook Simple Touch had damage. Yeah, this does not look good. It looks like it's on every screen here and we're pressing the end button and nothing's coming up. So uh, what I'm gonna do real quick here is pop the power button back in and I'm gonna try to press a power here. And it looks like the reader very well may be toast from the backdrop from five feet. All right, let's continue with the test and see how much more we can damage this. Okay, this e-reader has taken a copious amount of damage thus far. Now it's time to drop it on its side from the five foot mark and let's see what happens. Whoa! Well, that didn't sound that bad. I think the wind actually turned it a little bit because I think I had it pretty, pretty well on its side but it seemed to have shifted but uh, let's inspect the damage. Yeah, it's going for a closer look. Going in for a closer look, it looks like that we've just seen some minor peppering on the back of the case here. That's about it. Let's continue the test. 
Alright, it's time for the final test. We're going to drop this sucker on its screen from the five foot mark. I remain concerned <laughs> on exactly what will happen here. I have a little bit of trepidation. So without further ado, let's drop it. Mm, no big cracks, didn't, didn't sound that bad. Let's go in for a final damage assessment. So we saw minimal damage dropping it directly on its screen, and that's mainly because of the screen itself is actually sunken in. It's not like a tablet where the screen is flush with the bezel. So we did see, again, some minor superficial scratches, mainly along the silver trim. We don't really see a lot of damage on the black here. All right, final damage assessment. Overall, the nook on its back and sides, minor superficial damage. You saw that the trim started separating from the bezel, but it didn't completely pop off. But the power button did pop off. And that's why I think that Barnes & Noble changed the way that the power functionality works with the new Nook Glow Light. This e-reader, I don't think that we've ever really seen an e-reader before that became totally inoperable due to our drop test. What happened is that when we hit it on the back, the screen kind of went into this little bit of bleeding and ghosting. And in the past, we've seen that when the page doesn't refresh enough, all you have to do is either go out or do a uh, hard reboot, pressing and holding the power button for a couple seconds. This wasn't the case. We put the power button back on. We tried pressing and holding it for 2, 10, 20 seconds. Tried pressing the N, manual page turns, everything we could. The device is pretty much useless, except for the fact that the glow light still turns on and off. Um, the tear hasn't really gotten any bigger. The lights all still work. It illuminates the page pretty evenly, but nothing else works. Yeah, the e-reader itself is totally trash. I think at this point, if this were to ever happen to you, you could think of this as a very expensive nightlight. So, final result, the Barnes & Noble Simple Touch with Glow Light, RIP.